light novels. Hello and welcome back to that light novel guy and in this video I'm going to give you some light novel recommendations ready for 2024. Let's have a look and see what I have got for you. It's been some time since we spoke about Konosuba on this channel. I recently picked up Konosuba God's Blessing on this wonderful world Fantastic Days. Now this is a spin-off short story that takes place sometime after the anime ends or at least the anime movie. Not too much afterwards so if you've only watched the anime you're pretty much in good stead here. This is a spin-off story and actually is the story of the plot of the mobile game called Fantastic Days. Kazume has another quick rich scheme which is well idols of course the most perfect of quick rich schemes I mean cover have been doing that and he discovers some talent in his well the starter town and that quickly ends up on another Konosuba esque adventure with fanboys, over-the-top ridiculousness, and a useless goddess. It is a very good addition to the series. It's not written by the original author. In fact, it's actually written by the author of the Vendor Machine Isekai. That's right. Our pal who wrote Vendor Machine Isekai once again gives us a fantastic new addition to Konosuba. And this one is worth checking out. Sadly, our original trio, Aqua, Megamin and Darkness, play second fiddle to the new trio of girls. But don't let that put you off. It is a nice little addition and a nice little extra story for those wanting more Konosuba. And I'm sure those who are already caught up with Konosuba do want that. Next up, we have Infinite Dendrogram, and if I'm not hyping up Infinite Dendrogram, assume I am dead. Because Infinite Dendrogram is the best series that nobody is reading. It is absolutely fantastic. You know those series where you watch an anime and just think, this is absolutely appalling, I don't want to read it? Well, Infinite Dendrogram was that one, and unfortunately got a raw deal when it came to an anime adaptation. To the point that I still see people to this day come to me and say Infinite Dendrogram is a bad series because I watched the anime and it, the first episode was not very good. And I agree, the anime is terrible, but Infinite Dendrogram is a series that you guys want to be checking out. If you want your over-the-top shonen battle series with a huge world full of colourful and interesting characters, this needs to be on your list. It regularly takes entire volumes just to build up the world and other people in it just to make the payoff later on that much better. It's a series that gets very little love online because of the anime but it is one that every time I pick up a volume it is fantastic. Do please check it out, please do. Now, early last year, I covered a title called Sasaki and Peeps, and the anime recently came out. So I had to pick up an extra volume, volume four, and then I realized volume five was also out, so that's sitting on my to read pile. Sasaki and Peeps tells the story of Sasaki, a man in his late 30s, early 40s, having a bit of a midlife crisis. He decides he's gonna buy a pet, and what pet does he pick? Well, he picks a small sparrow, which can talk. Yes, that's very important. It turns out that the sparrow is the Star Sage, who has been isekai from another world and trapped in a sparrow's body. He teaches Sasaki the secret of traveling to and from different worlds, and Sasaki decides to, well, make his life a little bit more comfortable by selling things on the side. That's right. And then he gets back and discovers he can learn magic. He learns magic and, well, then the psychics find him. And then the magical girl comes for him. And now, alert, a kaiju is approaching Tokyo. This is an isekai mismatch. If you ever liked a series called Recreators, this one is for you. An adult protagonist, there are a lot of young girls, but he has no interest in them. Don't worry, there is no romance between Sasaki 
and any of these very young girls. And it's one of those series that I can understand why people might be put off, but do check it out. It is a very fun one. Late last year, I made a video talking about series that I would love to pick up if I ever had the chance. Series that I originally gave a try to and then dropped for whatever reason. And I came off the back of it wanting to read a certain series. And I did that. I started rereading Spice and Wolf. And I have read volumes 2 and volume 3 of Spice and Wolf and honestly, for a series that was definitely beloved and kind of, I feel, doesn't get talked about nearly as much as it should, Spice and Wolf is probably one of the best series I have read. I can't put it out of my top because there are other ones I just like that a little bit more, but Volumes 2 and Volume 3 were just perfect. This is a series about a merchant, a merchant named Lawrence who dreams of owning his own shop. He's a traveling merchant, he goes from town by town, he buys wares and sells them at a profit or, well, that's what he hopes anyway. One day he discovers a young girl in his cart, a young girl with ears and a teal, and she reveals herself to be Hollow, the Wheat Wolf, or whatever, kind of, it's very similar to that, and she's just wanting to go home. He befriends her and they become unlikely companions. Now this is a romance at its heart, it's obvious that these two are going to get together in the end, but what you also steer for is the economics. For a series about economics, this one, oh my god, is fantastic. You guys need to read this one. This is a must read light novel and I don't say that lightly. There are plenty of titles that I feel like people see are must reads but aren't particularly good. This one is a must read. It is so well written. Everything has been thought out. The entire world, the entire economics, each volume is exciting and is very tense. You kind of have an idea of how it's going to turn out but there's twists and turns along the way. Wow. Just three volumes in, this one is still in my top five light novels. Do check it out. Please do. Over the Christmas break, I read a series that is very dear to me and is my number one favourite light novel, Ascendance of a Bookworm, and I caught up and finished part four. Ascendance of a Bookworm is about a young girl named Mine. She is killed by books and wakes up as a very poor child who, well, she's not going to be able to get books. So what does she do? She decides to make them. Now this has many twists and turns along the way. I'm not going to get too into what is currently, currently going on, but it's my number one and it's there for a reason. I have read over 100 series and this one is easily the best series out there. Spice and Wolf's also very good. This continues the story. Volumes, God knows, end of part four, and oh my God, this is just amazing. I can see it all the, I can just keep seeing, this is amazing, this is amazing, this is amazing. On a, in a video where I'm talking about pretty much nothing but fantastic series, this one continues to be a gem, and I can't wait to pick up part five. Please, dear novel club, release it faster. I know you're putting them out so fast, release them that little bit faster so I can get them. I can't wait for part five to come out. I'm really excited. Obviously I'm buying them physically so do check out Ascendance of a Bookworm. I've covered it many many times on the channel. If you ask anybody who's in a light novels it will always come highly recommended. It's worth your time. Now from something that I absolutely love to something that I have absolutely zero concept of. I was given a review copy of Bungo Stray Dogs the anime the novel. That's right. So this is an interesting one. Bungo Street Dogs is a manga that originally became a light novel and then became an anime and now this is a novel of the anime version of the manga. Yeah. Now I've never seen anything about this series before. I know it's immensely popular. I know it's down with the youth. I know the youth absolutely love Bungo Street Dogs. I've never encountered anything for it and if I'm honest it was kind of okay. I can kind of see where it's coming from, 
My only issue with this is this is an anime adaptation. It re all the characters read like anime characters. I don't feel like I'm reading the book with characters. I feel like I'm reading the book with anime characters. And by that, that I mean they're very animated. They kind of have things written on them which makes you kind of go, oh yeah, I can see that. I can visualize that is as an anime. Whereas a book, you would obviously pick up your own kind of thing. It's designed for a younger crowd. This is 13 and up, whereas originally the series is 16 and up. It is meant to appeal. But if I was very young getting into light novels, I think this is a good shout. I think this is a very good starter light novel. Only 100 pages. If you know somebody who likes Bungo Stray Dogs, it might be a good birthday gift for them. Um, yeah, I like the idea of it. Um, it wasn't necessarily for me. I'd probably pick up the actual light novel or manga for it, but it did a good job of appealing to anime fans. Speaking of anime, I actually recently rewatched one of my favourite anime, or well, one of my favourite light novels that has an anime. That anime was Bofuri. I don't want to get hurt, so I'll max out my defence. The anime is still very fun. And I also read Volume 11. And yeah, this is also still very, very fun. This is about a girl who starts an online game, she doesn't want to get hurt, and so she puts all of her points into vitality. Thus breaking the game, <laughs> she just constantly goes on these adventures, gets these new skills which just recurb everything that people know, and all of the admins are just like, we can't do anything, all of the other players are like, we can't do anything against her. She becomes unstoppable. but. At its heart, this is a cute girl does cute fun things by being incredibly overpowered series. And that continues with this. This kind of has settled into being very much um, going on various quests, doing various new kind of monthly, weekly tasks or what have you, as you would in an MMO game. I kind of feel it's starting to get a little bit stagnant, but... I don't think that's in a bad way, it's more that I kind of know what I'm getting from it. I know it's not going to be anything too taxing, but that's just what I want sometimes. Sometimes I read some really difficult series or some series I've got to kind of think about. Some series I've got to write a review on, which does add a little bit more. But Fury is that old friend you can come back to, read it for an hour or two and just have a great time. It's so much fun and definitely worth checking out. Next up is a series that I was very excited for. It has a combination of two of my favourite, well, producers. It has the artwork from Overlord and the writer of Goblin Slayer. I'm talking about Blade and Bar Stewards. I'm not going to say that because I'll get demonetized, even though I'm probably doing a full on video on this. And this is your typical fantasy. Now, this is based on a game called Wizardry, which, for those not in the know, is Baldur's Gate before Baldur's Gate came out. Wizardry was kind of your very early. Dungeons and Dragons game on title, things like the NES, um, SNES, Mega Drive, I think there's a Game Boy one, and it's precursed a lot of titles such as Etrian Odyssey, so you would have to write down, make maps and stuff like that by exploring these dungeons, and it is essentially Dungeons and Dragons as a game. This is a book based on Wizardry, which is based on Dungeons and Dragons, but it's based on the people who clean up. So we've got our main character who goes into the dungeons and collects the corpses of fallen heroes. The heroes can go and revive them at the churches for a monetary reward. Um, but it is pretty much a dark fantasy. He discovers this abandoned girl who can only speak in dog language, she just, just makes grunts and barks. Um, but yeah, it's a very interesting title, I'm going to talk about this one a little bit more. But if you want a dark fantasy title, very similar if you're coming off the back of 
Baldur's Gate 3, I know that's popular with the youth. I'm playing Dragon Quest at the moment, so I don't have time for it. But if you want a series like that, this one is definitely up your alley. I like this one a lot more than Goblin Slayer, and the artwork is fantastic. Now, before we get on to my final title, I want to ask you guys, what have you been reading this month? Let me know in the comments. I'm always up for learning about new series. And, well, if you do like this content, leave a like and consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel and you get plenty more light novel recommendations. So, the last title I'm going to talk about is one of my favourite games of all time, adapted into book form, Near Replicant. Now, this is file one. File two comes out in a few weeks' time, in March. And this is a literary retelling of the original Nier Replicant game. So we've got Nier, Grimoire, Vice, Emile, Kynir. If you've played Automata, this is the prequel. And yeah, this is a very good adaptation of it. So good that it actually is an interesting one. So I love Nia so much. I had a blast with this. It read fantastic. It reads like a novel. It doesn't read like a light novel. Those who kind of understand what I mean by that will understand straight away. Other titles include Spice and Wolf, where they don't feel like you're reading kind of a weird translated one. It feels like it's actually an English originally in English, and not translated and localised. It is a very good adaptation. It does spoil some things later on, so I would maybe recommend this after you've played the game, or if you don't mind getting spoiled on something very major that happens towards the very end of the first playthrough of the game, um, about some certain characters. Um, but yeah, it, this has everything. This sheds. This actually has a little bit more between me and Yona. It actually gives me a little bit more motivation between them two characters of what Nia actually has to do to save his younger sister. Um, this is about a world that's kind of dying, there's these monsters called Shades all over the place that kind of kill anybody that's going around and there's this mysterious plague that is coming and killing people. Nia's sister Yona, she has this illness and Nia is doing what he can to help her. He discovers this interesting book called Gwynmar Vice which basically is the world saving tomb. It's going to save the world or so the words go in a certain song. And this is the first half of the first playthrough. So Nia has many playthroughs, you play through the first one, then it goes to a time skip, then after that you kind of finish the game, but then you kind of can go back and do other things and kind of you get a little bit more exposition and stuff like that. So this is the junkyard, this is the Ares, this is the forest of myth. It is what you would expect from the first half of the game, so the pre-time skip stuff. It's a very good adaptation. I really recommend checking this one out if you like it. It's gonna sh it sheds some new light on some things, I would definitely say. It's definitely worth picking it up. I had a blast from start to finish and I read it in like two or three days, so yeah. Do check this one out and if you did enjoy this, like I said, leave a like and consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. Thanks for coming and thanks again for staying. Goodbye.